Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the RDA. This is your Manchester United vs West Ham Carabao Cup match reaction in which um, Ali and Manchester United have failed yet again and have bottled yet another trophy. And I think this is very debatable today because I know some people who defend Ali, who back Ali, will be like, you know what, the team was right, the team selection was right. It's not our priority competition, so we shouldn't be acting that serious about it but and i get that I, I do get that if you like that but then you get all the artists like myself who just think you know this is another trophy we bottled and who are we to disrespect the cup like this when this manager and this team hasn't won a trophy since he's been at this club you know who are we to just throw this away and was that an excuse for um city chelsea or liverpool yesterday and they don't take it seriously at all they openly don't take this seriously but they still through the next round so you know it would be nice to win to the next round possibly stay in win this trophy and get these loads of players more game time. So I think in general, certain players today, and just again, the way we play, the way we coached, all fell off and left. And this is just something we've been saying season after season after season. And the only question I ask to Ali Innes today is that, you know, last season we spoke about the word progress. You know, Ali has made progress. And I tell you what, already, this season we knocked out of the Carabao Cup way earlier than we were last season. So where's the progress now? Just some food to talk. But anyways, if you are new, just subscribe, just smash a like, because I am finished with life. Um, Claire, you know, before I get to you, obviously, um, Moloto isn't here yet, because he's having some um, problems with the software. So hopefully, if he comes, you'll join in later. But yeah, Clay, for now, <clears throat> how are you doing? You know, what did you think of the, the game? It was just so depressing. In all honesty, I got so bored of it. It's just the same Oli Ball tactics. And it gets us nowhere against these type of teams. So, yeah, this is going to be a very critical show about Oli. I can probably show that right now. Again, some players didn't perform, but I think the overall thing we've got to take away right now is this was a trophy that we should have been contesting a little bit. I understand we're not going to do the quadruple every season. I understand we're not going to do the treble every season. But you should get into the latter stages of most competitions when you have a squad that good. Because I'm sorry, that team right there, some pretty big squads would be glad to have a team like that. That seems good enough to a, be to West Ham. That, that, that seems good enough to be to West Ham. To be a second team West Ham, I might add. Because mm. that wasn't West Ham's first team. That was nowhere near West Ham's first team. They only played Bowen. That's the only player they didn't rotate. They even rotated their goalkeeper with us. Mm. The, that team's good enough. The, I... I I know some players didn't quite turn up today, and there are some excuses for that, obviously. But genuinely, that team is more than good enough to be contesting against West Ham's B team. Mm. So I, I don't really have any excuses for Ali. I don't even want to hear them in all honesty right now. He didn't look bothered today, to be honest. Yeah, he didn't look it, like it felt he like really it. cared about going out to the Carabao Cup. So again, if you're in a position where this is a useless trophy, this is a throwaway game, go for it. But again... Our standards are way too low at this club. I, I, I at least expect to make it past the first round. That should be the bare minimum of our expectations this season. Make it past the first round of the Carabao Cup. First round of the FA Cup. Mm. That should be bare minimum for Ali. So, I don't understand how something like this can happen at a club like Manchester United. And again, like you said, all these other big teams are quite literally taking the piss in some of these competitions and playing youth. They're not playing serious players. And... They're getting through against Premier League teams as well, so I, I don't understand it. It makes no sense, and I don't want to hear these excuses, because if our manager was a Klopp, two Shula Pep, this should take two game wins today. Whether we concede that goal or not, we, we should be winning this game. We had 27 shots today, six of them on target, and very few yeah. of them were in the box. So even then, the shots we had, the chances we had, it just weren't good enough. They weren't clear enough. They weren't, they weren't well earn chances where you want the chance to happen like that West Ham goal that's what I'm talking about that, that's a proper chance created proper tapping set it up done easy yeah. they move on with life and it wins in the game so I got no problems West Ham deserved to win that game we deserve to go out of that game don't get it uh, twisted so I think I have to say as well it, it's like we've regressed again because I, I touched on this in the last show we shot a lot but we didn't create a lot of chances and this is the same issue that we saw two seasons ago we were just shooting a lot, but it was coming to no avail. Like, again, that Europa League game comes to mind against some random team where we had a good 20-plus shots and we didn't score a single goal. And we played a really strong team. So right now, all I'm seeing is regression on Ali. All I'm seeing is the same tired old tactics. 
but rely a lot on individual burdens. So I can tell you right that, now, that's what it looked Bruno like today, wasn't happy. Today, because okay, some, certain players, I think, why well, they were so selfish, like Lingard is so selfish. Okay, I'm not going to tell say on you, but like, you know, Bruno is so selfish. It's like, you have to do that to get game time under Oli. You have to show that, yes, I have individual brilliance to get to this team. No yeah. one was playing as a team today. It was ridiculous. Everyone was just alone. They were doing the two things. Bar about maybe three players on this board, four players maybe. I was very disappointed. And that, I don't yeah. really blame them because, like I said, game time for them is limited. They're going to want to prove everything they they got because they don't ever get the chance. They never get a chance. They're not going to get yeah. chances in the league. And that's also, again, that comes down to Oli. Oli doesn't ever give them enough chances. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, again... Uh, it's, it's a case of these players aren't going to gain time under this manager. They should be rotated into the squad slowly, even just for 10, 20 minutes every game. Someone like a Matic, a Dani, should be getting those minutes. A Tele should be getting those minutes. Because we have the squad to do it, and if we're not going to take other competitions seriously, this is what happens. I hadn't seen a lick of Bai. I didn't think he, since like one of the first games of preseason he played. Mm. I haven't even seen him mention in the squad, if I'm being honest. I haven't looked for him. Mm -hmm. And now he's suddenly thrust into a game to play a full 90 against West Ham. I, I, it just makes no sense. And I don't understand it because these players need game time to flourish. Bai is a prime example of that. So, it's just so frustrating as a United fan to watch no progress. Because uh, now the argument's out the window. Because whenever you say, oh, second place progress, now we go Carabao Cup first round progress. So, mm -hmm. so uh, it's not good on Ali. It's not good on the club. This is a game we should be winning. This is West Ham's second team, Bob Bowen. And we screwed the pooch. Simple as that. Yep. So I, I'm just really interested. I wonder what the excuse mm. will be. Because there's always an excuse. And I think those clues today will be on certain players. And that's it. So I'll just be like, it's players, it's a Mickey Mouse trophy, we don't care. But I just think, who oh, are you to say this is a Mickey Mouse trophy when we haven't won a single trophy since Oli has been at this club? No, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Yeah. Right now, considering our past managers were more successful for the worst team against teams that were exceptionally dominant, like the City getting a Centurion and a treble that season. Or it was it a treble? I think it was a treble. Well, not a <laughs> well, not a, it was a, it was a plastic treble. Yeah. We also still won trophies on a jersey. We won trophies on the Van Gaal. I, I don't understand it. At the very least, we should be contesting this. I don't give a shit about this Mickey Mouse right now. Because uh, it's something. It's something. Something's better than nothing. Last season, our bare minimum was a trophy. Right now, uh, it's just gone up. It, it's very much gone up. It's go latter stages of every competition and show why you are the man for the job. Show you why we bought CR7, bloody Jaden Sancho, and Rafael Varane, if you're just going to get knocked out of the Carabao Cup in the first round. Because yeah. that shows you're not serious. Because other managers have done better with worse. Yeah, I want to see what Oli says, because I'm, I want, I'm interested to see what he says. He's like, you know what, we didn't really care. It is what it is. Our focus is in the league and Champions League. Well, then I'm just thinking, you better win one of those then. You better yes, win. Yeah, I better see right. a Premier League trophy at the end of the season. I better see a Champions League trophy at the end of the season. Because I'm not having this. I'm not having yeah. this. But anyway, so we move on and speak about Oddie when we get to his, uh, his rating again. So let, let's get into it. Um, starting off with Dean Henderson. With regards to the goal, it was very close to him. I'm not going to entirely blame him and say he could have done better. No. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. Other than that, I thought he was very quiet. And then end of the game comes, last 10 minutes. He was actually he did pretty well, to be fair to him. He made two good saves. And I think that will just boost his rating up to a 6. I guess I'll give Dino a 6. Yeah, uh, uh, there's not too much we can really blame him for with that goal. And, yeah, it was just an okay game, so I'm okay with the 6. I'm yeah. going to agree, though. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds sad. Because I think lots of us like Alex Tellers. Yeah. Today is not his game by any means. It always shows why, you know, I lo I know I understand people pushing for Alex Tellers, but some people push Alex Tellers to be number one left back. And I know he hasn't got chances. I like Alex Tellers. I think he's a great replacement or whatever. Yeah. He just came back from injury. He doesn't get enough game time. He's very rusty. A performance like that. It's very disappointing, but like I said, it's not entirely just on him because, like I said, he had an injury. He hasn't get doesn't get enough game time at all. Right. But it's it's the point where I always say that this is why Luke Shaw is our number one left back because Teller is defensively 
is disgusting. And going forward today, I've only ever heard since Alex Telles has joined us. And I know he hasn't had enough games to prove himself. But I've always heard about how great Alex Telles is going forward. And I'm still yet to see it from Alex Telles. Yep. So like, just like that, very disappointed. He's completely at fault for the goal we conceded. So yeah, it's a rough day for him. I'm not saying this is Telles', Telles is standard, but I'm going to give Telles... Yeah, I'll give him a four. You know, again, I, I can't blame him too much. This man just came back from a really rough injury. That set him back, what, like mm. three months of actual game time. And even before then, he was barely playing. The, this guy really should be pushing for a move because he was one of Europe's top-rated fullbacks when he joined us. And he hasn't got any game time, and he's only suffered because of it. But again, today was a poor performance. Can't really hide that, clear as day. And yeah, I do think a big part of it was Taylor's in that ball go through. So I'll agree with the five. Definitely subpar from Taylor's, and we expect a lot better from him. Yeah. Um, yeah, Taylor's is subpar, unfortunately. Yeah, Taylor's subpar, just not his day. Victor Lindelof. Yeah. Yeah, did he play? Did he? I can't remember anything Lindelof did. I can't remember defending things, long balls. Yeah, nothing. Just, just a ghost in the game, really. Because we did dominate this game in terms of possession, and you know. But yeah, just it's a Victor Lindelof performance. We've said this before. That's why I love Varan because it's about with Lindelof when he doesn't have a, a great game where we can notice something. He has one of these games. It's like, what did he do? Yeah, I, I can't tell you what Victor Lindelof did. So I'll give him a five. Yeah, I can agree. I, I think just. A lot of our defense, except the last one we get to, was very quiet today. And yeah, I guess it can be a little bit harsh. I'll clear the fact that it's a subpar all round. And I feel like there was a lack of anything from the center backs, in all honesty. I didn't really see anything happen, but West Ham went attacking that much, I would say. They were still on the lesser side of it. Uh, I just didn't see a centre back that much. So. That's interesting because okay. I actually think Bay played well today. I won't lie to you. I thought Bay played well today. I thought defensively he did nothing wrong. I did see him here and there. Um, in terms of winning the ball in the air, he won everything. Going forward on corners and set pieces, he looked like a threat, and he actually looked like he was trying to fight and prove why he deserves more game time. And I just think you know I probably see Bay today more than I see Harry Maguire influence games today. So. I, I, yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe let us know what you guys think in the comments because I actually thought I noticed by it today. Like, I did notice by it today. He made sure that I could say something about it today. So, because of that, I'm actually going to be by a six. I thought he was average, but yeah, I could notice him at least today. Uh, uh, that's a bit of a fair one because he did just do his job fine, and I guess that's why I could say there was a lack of really being noticed. Mm. But it was definitely a bit of better than the bunch, but it is very much lackluster from both the center backs i very much did the bare minimum today i think because that, that's what to expect of a center back you're meant to be winning the shit in the air you're meant to be some kind of rock in the defense especially when you're playing against playing for a team as such manchester united victor was very quiet i can understand that mm. and uh, the, the moments for both of them but i think slightly goes down the ship because we still still concede so i'm just going to get the fives Now we we'll go to the the man of the moment probably. His name's Diego Dello. He's also got a huge Yo, butt. Excuse you. Well, you know it is what it is. Um, Dalit, I could even say that, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna disrespect him. But he played phenomenal uh, today. I thought honestly, Juan is still my first choice right back. But today, spot on. He, that's what you're supposed to do when you get a, your chance like this in a game. Going forward, phenomenal crosses into the box on a plate. Going forward, just the runs in general, some of the passing, phenomenal. He had a shot, like I said, a good shot, could have scored. Um, defensively, I thought he was very tidy for once. Usually, I always, you know, I slate a little because I don't think he's anywhere near Aaron Basaka defensively. But today, yeah. decision-making was on point. When he had to slide, when he stayed on his feet, everything. I can't fault Diego Delo. I thought he was phenomenal. I think a game like that, if I was Oli, I'd be like, you know what, maybe. I, I understand Aaron Basaka is my number one right back. But the low needs to get some more games because he plays. If he plays like that, if that was Ronaldo in the box today, <laughs> could have had a few goals today, in my opinion. Yeah. So, no problems with the low. I think he's probably he could be contender with the man of the match today. So I'm gonna give him a seven. Yeah, 
Unfortunately, I'm not going to raise it too much just because I do think he's one of our better players, but everyone was piss poor, so it's not that hard to stand out in this kind of crowd. But yeah, I fully agree with that. I think he was solid defensively, and offensively, he actually showed why he was rated so highly as a youngster, and he's still young, he's got lots of room to grow. And I do think some more appearances are needed for him. I don't see them happening, except in the Champions League, obviously. So... Uh, six. I'm just gonna keep it average for now. It, it was still, it was good, but it was still just average overall, I guess. But I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't okay. the best. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did say Nothing there was. Um... Up, that's the best. Sorry. Yeah. Nothing really came up. That's the best. Yeah. What I will say though, I did say before early in the show, I said there were three players for me that stood out, and yeah. I think then it was the low. And the next one no. that I'm about to mention, Matic and Donny. There is no doubt yeah. in my mind that Matic and Donny are by far our best pivot we can put out there. And that's probably including Paul Pogba there. Because like I said, Paul Pogba's best performances this season have probably come from left wing. And I haven't yeah. seen Paul Pogba with Donny. I haven't seen, well, I've seen Pogba and Matic. And I love that. But when the, Matic and Donny plays, oh, it just, like I said, Pog, Donny is the best for both worlds. He'll give you the tracking back and defense of Fred and better, and he'll do what Paul Pogba does, not to that extent going forward, but to a good enough extent, better than Scott McDominay. So he's both our pivot players, Ollie's, not our, Ollie's first choice pivot players, in one, and he's better than both of them. I cannot get it in my mind why, why Tony gets disrespected, even after, there's no way Ollie can watch today's game. And honestly, think in his head that McFred are better than Donny van der Beek today. Because you are a proper P teacher then, if you think that. But we'll start off with Matic. Solid. Solid. No problems with him. Defensively, did his duties. He's, he's very old right now, so we can't expect too much. But again, when he's playing defensively, we look solid. He links up play well. So, I'm going to give Matic a 7. He's just... He's the balance. He's, he's makes this midfield balance. And I watch McFred week in, week out, and I get depressed. Today I watched Matic and Donny, and I didn't get depressed. I was very happy with the midfield today. So yeah, seven from me. Yeah, I can definitely agree with the original statement. These are definitely the best three players of the team. And uh, I think Matic gets my man of the match, in all honesty. I think he did everything right. Uh, and we'll get to Donny and why I don't think he is man of the match. But I just think Matic did everything right. He always thinks to play so well when he's on it. He even just pulled off like a Pogba dribble today. It was just it was just a masterclass from Matic again. I just really enjoy him when he is playing like this. So yeah, I would match the seven. But yeah, man of the match. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a sad day. It's a hard <laughs> night. <laughs> it's hard. It yeah. is. It is. But I tell you what, Tony Van der Beek. It's without a doubt my man of the match today. I thought he, he did everything right for me. I think, you know, there was moments here and there where he could have done better, tracking his man, you know, maybe the odd defensive duty here and there. But other than that, I was just thinking, you know, this is a guy who never gets game time at Manchester United. This is a guy who's always eager and trying to prove himself, who said it himself, I want to just play football. I want to work myself into this Manchester United team. And I tell you what, defensively, Donny is better than Fred. Going forward... Donny is better than Scott McTominay. As a pivot, Donny is better than McFred. I cannot believe I'm watching McFred week in, week out when there's someone like Donny van der Beek in the squad. I've always said I don't think any other manager would do that. And I think Oli is, that's a big negative for Oli. And so one of the reasons I'm Oli out because I just, for the life of me, basic decisions like this, I cannot understand. Because Donny today, he balled for me. And today he's my man of the match. I think it was by far the brightest spark in this team, so I'm gonna give him an eight. Okay. Yeah. So the main reason that I'm not on the Donny hype train today is because I was watching a different feed of the game, so I don't know if you saw this as well. But at halftime, it was actually Don Lanzini was Donny's man, and he I completely lost no, track of him. So the, I give him a lot of fault for that. But besides that, I do think he was really good for the day, the game. Mm. You can definitely say that. The only reason I was going to bring that up also, because the only yeah. reason I don't want to say Donny for that is because in that whole position, I would never expect Alex Tellez to get skinned the way he got skinned yeah. and then come all the way back to track the man. I just like, you know, I, yeah, I know exactly. it is Donny, Donny has part to blame, but I was just like, 
And yeah. Taylor's got skin. Even I was like, wait, what? I had to look back at the TV. I was like, no way this just happened. And then you can see it. So I was like, ah, oh, yeah, exactly. Man. Uh, definitely, yeah, where that comes from, uh, the, the, it's a fair assumption because I don't think many people would assume that Taz is going to get skinned and that ball is going to go through. But Tony did lose track of his man. I think this needs to be some kind of blame there. So besides that, I do think he was really good overall. Danny always impresses whenever he plays. He gets into very positive positions. He tries to link up play well. He's not even afraid to carry the ball, which I noticed a lot today. He tried to do what Scott does a little bit and do a little yeah, bit of yeah, drive. Yeah, he should. Like, he should what Danny yeah. wants to see. You know? He should want to compete with the field on He's like, I'm, you want individual brilliance? I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to mm. just do everything myself. So. And I think to anyone else, he really did show why he's he a competitor. He should have he's had an assist today. That long ball for Mason Greenwood... Again, I'm betting my house that Mason Greenwood scores that. I, don't, I would have lost my house like yeah. three times already. But yeah, he should have exactly. had an assist again today. And he should have had probably a few chances to score a goal. But some yeah. people named Jesse Lingard have a Donny van der Beek agenda, which I can't get to. I don't understand. Everyone yeah. does want to pass to Donny when he's in the best position. Whether it's Bruno, Lingard, Mason, Donny is always open. So I just love Donny van der Beek. I just love him. Yeah, again, a complete midfielder in my eyes. He's honestly the best midfielder at this club in every aspect, basically. He, he's the most complete midfielder defensively, offensively. Mm. He has everything. And again, I do think it was a really good performance, but I do think the goal lowers are quite a lot in my eyes, so I'm just going to go with six and a half. Okay. Definitely positive, but losing your man like that shouldn't be happening. I understand the situation. But he overcommitted and just created a lot of space, you know. Mm. But we we move on. Um, now nah, this is where it gets sad. This is where it's depressing. Ma- Mata, I'm not gonna say anything. I won't even lie to you. I didn't know you were playing. I'm so glad you went off the field. I'm just gonna, yeah, your time at this at Manchester United. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's two out of ten. I don't know what you yeah. did. It's done. It's time to retire. Go get your coaching yeah. badges, not in my club because you already give too many jobs at the boys. I don't want you at this club. Yeah. Just, you're a nice guy. I love you. You know, personality. Like, you know, if you were my father in law or something, it would be great. But no, no, not a footballer for Manchester United. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, again, Matt, it, Matt uh, isn't really up to quality of Manchester United in general. As a squad player, he's all right, but that, that's about it. And again, I, I noticed him once, like the entire game, when he had the shot in the first half against Aero that he skied a little bit. Mm. Yeah, that was about it. You hit the bar, that's yeah. the only part. You know, you hit the bar, I'll give you three. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I, mean, I was I'll just going to go with five. Uh, I'll be a realistic one. Just a, Fair just Fair a subpar Fair. performance. Uh, but... uh, that shot, I honestly can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm okay with the subpar five. Mm, 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 mm. Hey! <sighs> I can tell you right now, Matt is on par with Lanzini in skill. I promise you that much right now. Just before anybody even tries to have the conversation. No, yeah, yeah. I'm not having the squad differences now. I was just yes, thinking no, them. Now I'm having it also. But, um, yeah. We have this man here. We have Jaden Sancho. He probably cost more than that whole bloody West Ham team today. So, yeah. with regards to Sancho, I'm not going to slay him or whatever. He needs time. I'm not worried. Every time I see Sancho, I think he gets better and better. I'm very concerned as to why he's still not at right wing position for Manchester United yeah. just because. If Pogba wants to get used left wing and and when Rashford comes back, what does that lead for Sancho? You know, and then when Sancho, if Sancho does play and he plays on the right wing, if he stinks it up on the right wing or is a bit rusty on the right wing for a few games, I don't want to hear it then, because Oli hasn't given him a chance at his actual position. He can do a job at left wing, and I think he did okay today. But I'm just that's my only concern. Other than that, today I think Sancho is trying too much to impress for me. It looks like he wants, mm. like what, basically what Oli does to pick his team. You need to do something magical to get selected by Oli, you know? Yeah. So it looks like he's trying it a bit too much. But there's certain moments where he just grows into the game and you're like, he's, he's, he's a player that we don't have at Manchester United. He's very skillful. He's very tidy. High ball IQ. I don't think you should be worried with Jadon Sancho. Let rivals fans talk about Jadon Sancho or whatever. We give him time. As long as he keeps getting game time and Oli doesn't, you know, not manage him well, he'll be fine. Trust me, Jaden Sancho will be fine. But as for today, not his best game, not his worst game, but 6 out of 10. Yeah, I think I can agree with the 6 for him. It, it, it was just that in-between game, it was just an average game. I think it was a bit of a little compared to last game. But again, Jaden Sancho is showing why he is a future talent, why he is so skillful right now, why he 
it's worth 80 million basically but again the biggest issue right now is just why is Ali using him on the left because that is not his best position he's meant to be a creator he is such an intelligent footballer and we're playing him on the left side where he's expected to cut inside and play the Rashford role and try score goals which he tried today but all his shots were blocked today mm. I, I just checked he had like four blocked shots He's, he's trying to be expected to be the primary goal scorer in the squad. But Sancho's meant to be the primary creator. And I think anybody who's ever watched Jaden Sancho, even heard of him, knows he gets like 10 plus assists a season. So I don't know what this reliance with Ali is with playing him on the left. But he's very much trying to force his Rashford agenda. And all it's making me think is that he's going to get benched as soon as the likes of Rashford are back. Yeah, awesome. But yeah, today it was just... An, Eh, game, so I'm happy to go to six. Yeah. Leave it there. As long as he plays with Rashford, you know, I think he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be fine because that's the link up we want to see, isn't it? We want to see the two best friends playing for the same team. Imagine yeah. Rashford and Sancho <sighs> on the wings with Ronaldo there. Oh, it, it's something to dream of. It's something to dream of. But yeah, I'm very worried about Sancho. Obviously, like I said, until Rashford's back, we don't know what Oli thinks, you know. Oli may as well just be thinking, yeah, I'll just play him here for now. I don't want to play Pogba or anyone else on the left for some odd reason because I wouldn't think so. If you want an inverted winger, you go put Lingard there then because there's clearly no one more selfish and more arrogant than Jesse Lingard. So it makes no sense to me why you, you wouldn't switch yep. them anyways. But, you know, it is what it is. <sighs> now, uh, now we get to this, man. One of my yeah, favourite yeah. players ever to play for Manchester United, Saucy Anthony Martial. I'm broken. I'm broken. I didn't want to say it, but his time mm. at Manchester United is done. It is finished. He don't look the same. He don't. I don't know what they did with my boy Tony, but he don't look the same. I don't, you know, there's. It's not. It might be a, a factor of many things, because if I'm Martial and if I had to, you know, be a proper Martial fanboy and think what what's going on, I'd say, you know, every time. I have a great season and I perform for this club. I instantly get disrespected by whoever the manager yeah. is and the club because they'll just bring in some wash striker, takes my position, I get slated on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the only reason I could think of. But other than that, I don't know what it is. Martial ain't making runs. He can't hold up. He doesn't have the close dribbling anymore. He, do he don't look saucy. Yeah, I always say whenever Martial's on the field, there will always be at least one moment I get excited by. And I didn't get excited at jack shit today from Martial. I think he was probably one of our worst players today. And, you know, I don't think he's done as a footballer. But I think his, his time at Manchester United is definitely done. Because when as soon as Greenwood came on and Greenwood made that one run, I'm just like, I didn't see Martial even attempt to do that. When I see Langa come on and I see him bursting through, I'm like, I don't see Tony doing that, so... It's very unfortunate. It breaks my heart because everyone, if you if you've been watching the RDA for a long time, you'd know how much Anthony Martial means to me. So for me to say that, uh, you, you just know it's over. Just just know it's over. And I I haven't said I've given up on Martial. I would obviously still play him. I'd still bring him off the bench. I'll still give him game time. But performances like that, I can't defend it. I can't defend it for Tony because, like I said, if I was in Tony's position, you know, and I was him him himself. I'll still give everything for the badge, you know, regardless of the yep. situation. So, But it's very sad. It's very unfortunate. Obviously, we don't help him with chances created. He doesn't help himself because, like I said, the things like Cavani, Greenwood, and Ronaldo, they don't care about getting a chance. Freaking Ronaldo will get half a chance and he'll bury it away. You know, Greenwood does the same. Cavani does the same. So it's very unfortunate. I hope he goes somewhere. And like I said, wherever he goes, I'll support him. But... Yeah, I think his time at Manchester United is done, which is sad to say, and I'll give him today. Yeah, I don't think I've given Marshall such a low rating ever in my life. I'm giving him a one, just for an appearing today. Uh, ah, yeah. Ali, you've won. Ali, you won. You killed my boy. You, this club has killed my boy. It's very sad. It's very sad. Yeah, again, Marshall hasn't found himself ever since he's come back into the squad. And uh, I'm just worried about him because there's such a footballer in him. And today, very much did not show his best qualities. And he just looked very lackluster. And uh, like you said, there's no defense for him today. So, yeah, I'm just going to go to fourth. And maybe his time is up at the club. But 
he, he's good enough to make it somewhere else. Definitely is at the top club. I, I feel for so. Tony. I feel for Tony. Because uh-huh. it's always after he does well. He'll have yeah. a magnificent season where he's one of our players of the season. And then in the very next season, United will be like, I'll bring in Ibrahimovic. Or I'll bring in Cavani. Or I'll bring in a Mourinho. I'll bring in... I'm not saying Ronaldo because I'll definitely take Ronaldo and Greenwood over Marshall. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But ah, oh, just sad to see the treatment. I think that's the only reason. I feel like with Martial, you know, Oli is he's always uh, praised for putting the arm around the shoulder. I just don't feel he does it with Tony. You know, Tony doesn't get special treatment. You know, the management of Lingard looks way better than the management of Anthony Martial, which is sad. I never thought I'd say it. You know, I thought I could back Oli with you know giving Tony some chances. You know, defending him, but. Like I said, it's not just Oli, it's Tony himself. It just, it don't look right. Like, regardless, I know the Anthony Martial, I remember, used to dribble the whole team, you know, skin a bunch of players, finesse in top corner. Today, he had a chance with his left. I can't believe for the life of me, he didn't have a shot. I can't believe for the life of me, he didn't have a shot. I can't believe he didn't hold up the ball, didn't pass the ball, didn't do anything with it. So I'm very disappointed with Martial, but it is what it is, you know. Manchester United, we move on in life, so. Yeah, I hope all the best for Tony, and I hope that somehow, somewhere, you turn this around. Because, like I said, I don't want to give up on you, but like, yeah, you're not leaving me anything to defend you for. That's for sure. You mm-hmm. give me something to defend you, I'll defend. You. But other than that, nope, I will not defend. I will not defend that. So it is what it is. Um, hey, you know that. Now we get just look at. I wish Maloto was it, because I really want to ask Maloto, and Maloto might not be on the Villa preview and match reaction because of exams. But you best believe, as soon as Maloto and I do our Tony and Rita show or whatever is on the next preview, I am going to bring this game up. Because today is exactly why I don't want Jesse Lingard at this club and why we should have sold him. It, I don't know who he thought he was today. I don't know who he thought he was today. He didn't pass the ball, shooting from halfway line, shooting from out the box. When Donny's one on one, when Mason's one on one, I don't understand. He's the most arrogant player I've ever seen. He's one of the most selfish players I've ever seen. He had an awful game. It reminded me just of Jesse, Jesse Lingard of old. I don't know what it is. You give this boy a little bit of confidence and that's what he does with the opportunity. That's what he does. You know how he, Tony doesn't get the opportunities you've been given. Tony doesn't get the opportunities you've been given. And you get it and you do that with it. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, I'm not having it. So with regards to Lingard, and he's on the right wing. I don't understand. Nah, I'm going to give him a three. He was definitely involved today, don't get me wrong, but like I said, yeah. he did absolutely nothing beneficial with when he was involved. He shot from ridiculous spaces, he didn't pass the ball at all. It's a shocking from Jesse Lingard. Yeah, Jay Lings has the confidence of Ronaldo. It, it's so... Yeah, it's, you know, Ronaldo does that, you understand, it's yeah. Ronaldo. But I don't know who you think you are. Jay Lings really thinks he's made it United after scoring two goals, you know. So, again, uh, Jesse is such a mixed bag. One day he's going to score a Balta and save us the game. The next day he's going to just think he's Prime Ronaldo and try to dribble the team and try to score a goal by himself. And today we saw the latter. So, this is what we, the two of us especially, expected from Jesse Lingard going forward. So, this is no surprise whatsoever to me. I could tell you right now, it would be surprised if you conceded a goal, you scored a own goal today. I have that little faith in Jesse as a United player right now. He's barely good enough to get on this bench. And if he continues with this hot and cold performance, I want him out of this club sooner rather than later. Because consistency is a big thing for a team that's meant to be challenging for titles, meant to be challenging for any cup. But like and I said, it should be. As long as he comes off the bench and he does what he does, for instance, he comes off the bench, I got no problem yeah. with it. That, that's what you can be used for then, clearly. You know, super sub. No yeah. problems. But if you think you're going to play games for Manchester United, no, 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 no. And Oli, yeah. you better not think about it. Because no, 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 I will slate you if Jesse Lingard starts game. Today, it was fine. I expected him to start. I've got no problems with you playing him today. But his performance yeah. was dinky. So, yeah. yeah, it should not earn him any more starts in the near future. Yeah. You should, and like, Oli if, should not be there thinking, yeah. I need to give Jesse more time. Because and you start him into a rail in the next yeah. Champions League game. Yeah. If that's what's on his mind right now, I'm... I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen because I know Donny's not going to get that same treatment. I know Marshall's not going to get that same treatment. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a ball game and all. You'll get him so far. Because mm. th- that just doesn't happen anymore with our players. And his favorites are more than apparent. And Jesse was very poor today. And 
just because of how selfish he was, I, I would argue that Martial had a better game because he was less involved. <laughs> I'm that just very critical of Jesse Lingard. Because some people are way up his ass for no reason other than they can be. It's because so he's from the Academy. Three. I'm telling yeah, you. If he was Martial today, oh um, my um, days. Yeah. He was Martial today, he's getting the one as well. He's like, why is Martial shooting from these angles? Why is he not doing anything? Why is he not doing yeah. his Why is he not making his passes? He's going to get the same kind of slack. And when you're that selfish, when you're creating that little, I, I'm i okay with the three. I'm okay, man. So there we go. Three, four, Jesse it's very unfortunate, it's very unfortunate, but I'll tell you what's even more unfortunate, that we are stuck, and there's nothing we can do about it. We are stuck with yep. the damn PE teacher as manager for Manchester United. Because now we can yep. analyse a certain Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Exactly. At least with Milota now, you know, I know, I know Milota's already out, so you know, yeah, you, the way he's been acting recently, you might give worse ratings than us. Exactly. But with regards to Ole. Positives, team selection, that's definitely a positive. I didn't really expect no. him to rotate that much. No. Yeah, it's about it really, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. That's about it really, to be honest with you, in terms of the positives. Other than that, I don't know what you expect. We've uh, we've been saying, Ali is lucky, and the only reason he wins games is because of individual brilliance. So as soon as you drop the quality of players in today's squad, some players are just not as world class as our first team, and they're not going to get you out of trouble in games like this. Yeah, against West Ham's second team. Exactly, exactly, hmm. exactly. So in games like this, where's your plan? Because by the looks of it, the way the, we played today, you told that team to go out, express themselves, and shoot on sight. That's what it looked like. The tactic was there. Yeah. It was like whoever scores the goal gets more game time in the future. That's what it looks like you told the players today. There was no chemistry. There was no clear plan. Bar Matic, Donny and Delo, there was there was no chemistry. There was absolutely zero chemistry. Substitutions. It, it was a bit weird from Ali actually. I don't know if it's a positive or it's negative, but I, I didn't expect our bench to be that weak. I know that Bruno Bruno and Greenwood, but like it was very surprising that there was no Ronaldo or like, you know, no full power but so it was very surprising. So I don't know if it's a positive or a negative. I'm not going to say it's a negative. I'm not going to say it's a positive. You rotated the squad, like I said, which is a which is a positive. But how did you get knocked out of this competition when you know you need to win a trophy? You haven't won a trophy. Who are you to disrespect this 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 competition? So I don't know. It's a mixed bag. Certain players didn't perform, but then if I really wanted to be um, strict and negative, I could say. You never ever gave those players opportunities anyways. You won't bring on Donny for 40 minutes in a game to change it. You won't play yeah. Sancho on the right, you know. You won't bring Ilanga into this. You won't play Tellers enough as you, as you should. You don't play low enough as much as you should. So, yeah, it's a weird one today. It's a weird one. I think if you look at the paper, we knocked out of the competition. We lost the game. In terms of the way we played overall, it was more... It could, in more entertaining in quotation marks but in terms of the chances created very lackluster the midfield is the reason why we look good today I'm convinced and we've been saying that is the privilege you should be playing but when it comes to the first team we play worse than what we played today it's just you got the better players up front and in the back to close out a game like today like if we had Ronaldo and Brian and Maguire we were at the back we probably win that game today because one that ball from Donny over the top goes into the back of the net from Ronaldo finishing and we won't let in a goal like that because it's sure ain't getting skinned like Taylor's got skinned today. So again, yeah. individual brilliance comes to hand. It's positive it's team selection. I try not to slate him too much because I said I wouldn't blame him if he really did like play the youth or played whatever team he played and lost it. Yeah. Like, you know, it is what it is then. But that team still, you don't have to know anything. That team is good enough to win that game. It should be good enough and we should be coached better than what we are so yes this is tough I'm just gonna give him a five I'm just gonna give him a five I'm just gonna give him a five yeah I understand where you're coming from because that's actually probably a really analytical stance and not so much agenda based yeah my brain but... is saying five my heart is like yeah. one like what are you doing yeah, exactly what are you doing? being realistic that is probably a genuine rating 
But you know what? It is a 10 out of 10 today. Ali somehow pulled the master class out of his ass again. I don't know how he keeps on doing it. How you lose to West Ham's second team with a team that good. Jaden Sancho. Oh my gosh. That, that alone is... But again, who are you to disrespect the Carabao Cup and not travel with Ronaldo? I'd say right now. I wonder what you... Ronaldo's saying, because I tell you what, Ronaldo would be happy that we went out today. He'd be like, yeah, I, don't, I didn't want to play in it, but if we got to the final, no. I want to win the trophy. So what do you think? Exactly. What do you think? No. Again, Ali, I understand why you wouldn't bring him, but like, that, why you wouldn't start him, should I say? Why you wouldn't bring your best player is a different story. So I, I don't understand that part of it, but I agree with you, team selection was probably the only positive I can really look at from today. The subs were all right. Maybe a bit late in the game, I would say, honestly. Because I think Bruno came on like the 70th yeah, going on 80th yeah. minutes. Bruno, before he came on, you could see he was already he was frustrated. So I was like, this ain't gonna go yeah, well exactly. anyways. <laughs> so. Bruno doesn't like losing. It's as simple yeah. as that. Bruno doesn't I, like you going to bring on someone that's going to be Ronaldo frustrated. Bruno doesn't like losing top. either. But it, at least I know with Ronaldo. He'll be experienced. He'll be like, okay. Yeah, he's no panic. On, he's like, let's, just, let's just do what we do, okay? It's just it's yeah. do what we do. But Bruno, that's when he's frustrated, I know he's going to shoot from the halfway line. I know he's going to do crazy things because he just wants to win and he wants to keep everything. So. That's exactly it right now. I, I So I don't get how he doesn't bring his best player along. I understand if you're going to play the youth, and I'm going to stick to my word as what I said before. If you played poorly, regardless of who you played out there on the pitch, I'm going to slate you. And we played poorly for three players, in all honesty. There's no real improvement. We're just shooting for the fun of it. We're not creating actual chances. But you know, football's a simple game. Sure sure enough, you're going to score goals. And I think that's all Ali already told the lads before it started. So, I'm not impressed. I really, really think Ali deserves a 10 for managing to go out against West Ham's second team. That is a miracle in itself. Uh, yeah. Beautiful performance. This is, this, is, this is his third band of 10 he's been given. I don't think right. it'll be his last, surprisingly enough. I don't yeah. think it'll be that. Because I tell you what, like I said, when, when it's our first team, I don't care who we play, unless it's probably a big team, I will give you a 10 for losing with that team. It's, I yeah. don't understand it. I don't understand it. So, yeah. In terms of a, a PS or anything else, I want to say is that Marshall is breaking my heart. But yeah. I know that I've got, as soon as Ilanga came on, that's where my hope was, because like, I, I said, I said, I'll never forget this thing with about Ilanga. His first ever time we got to see him in the United Show. I told Clay and Moloto, I don't know what it was, in that like five minutes we got to see him, he reminds me of a baby toad. And you know, every time it looks like that, so I'm happy exactly. with him. So yeah, anything else you want to say? Oh, we, we've got to pick up the standards at the club right now. That's all it is, right? Because... That's unacceptable. Well, uh, uh, I'll say that again, time and time again. I just want to know result. where's the progress now? You know, everyone was shoving progress down our yep. throats last season. Where are you going now? What are you going to say about today's game? <laughs> what are you going to say? Because you'll sound like a hypocrite if you, if you reply about today's exactly. game. Exactly. So. Because if your only opinion about this game right now is this is a throwaway game, this was a game we shouldn't be taking seriously. It's the first round. We played five games, no, like six games of football all season and we're ready to throw away a game. What? No, no competitive team does that. Again, look at all our big competitors right now. They won their games. There's yeah, no excuse. Yeah, just to, to end off, to so make people not too depressed, because it's depressing enough being United fan. If you're not an all in or you're not an all out, and you just all you just don't know what you're doing, you just want the best exactly. for Manchester United. If you want the positive, at least. West Ham to sit in the next round. So it is over anyways for us. It is over anyways for us. <laughs> We're out now. It is what it is. Don't be too sad, okay? These things happen, um, like I said, but it's very disappointing. It's very disappointing. And I don't think there's an excuse for Ali or certain players to it. So we just see, you know, it is what it is. Am I surprised? Nope. I'm not surprised. Like I said, I won't be surprised at the end of the season we win any trophies. And like I said, if Ali wins trophies, I'm going to be celebrating. I don't care. <laughs> you know, happy days. United won a trophy. I'm happy. So, yeah, it is what it is. I think it's been a good show. Well, we made it a good show in terms of what United gave us to speak about, you know, as always. So subscribe if you're not new and you enjoyed. Smash a like. If you're only in, please, I promise you now, just tell me what, like, what, what, like what you're going to say now. If you're an only in, huh, and you ever mentioned to your friends or anyone else last year the word progress, explain to me how today was progress at Manchester United. 
And the season's not over yet. But the only way to make up for like things like this is you got to win the Premier League or the Champions League at the end of the season. That's the only way you can make up for for not dis for disregarding competitions like this. And if it was Klopp or Pep who has won competitions before and they disregarded these trophies, I completely understand. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who has never won a trophy at this club, these players at this Manchester United club have never won trophies before. That's a very disrespectful thing to do. So, yeah, we'll check you all very soon. Villa is next again. We move on. It's it's. You get the press now. We win against Villa in the weekend. Everyone's happy again. The cycle continues. Yeah, it fine. is what it is. Preview out tomorrow. So yeah, stay tuned for that, and we'll check you all very very soon. Goodbye.